Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a fun little tag video. I actually saw this tag on Spread Book Joy's channel, which is a channel about a lot of children's and middle age book or middle grade books that I love to watch to get ideas for things to read with my kids. I think it's a fantastic channel, so I will link the tag below. I actually wasn't tagged, I just thought this sounded really fun and the questions were neat, uh, so I decided to go ahead and do it. So it's called the 10 last book tags and I have them all written down right here so we can get right into it. So the first question is the last book you didn't finish. This is a really hard question for me to answer because I almost never DNF books. I can probably think of maybe three ever that I have DNF'd. Uh, and it's just because, and I know people say you need to let it go and life's too short to read bad books. I like a lot of things, so I have fairly expansive tastes and I like a lot of different things about books. So if I don't like the writing style, then I can usually find something that I like in the character work. If I like the characters, then I can ignore the writing style. There's a lot, it takes a lot for me to want to DNF something and I don't want to talk about books that I hated that much because I don't think it's fair uh, to the person who put a lot of effort into writing them. So what I will say for this answer is that I DNF'd the audiobook of the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. And really why that happened is because I have been trying over the last year to uh, listen to more audiobooks. It's not something that I ever did, but I like to walk and run. I need to go out and walk the dog. I need to tidy up. And sometimes I like having something to do other than listen to music while I'm doing that. So I started getting into listening to audiobooks, nonfiction audiobooks, and I was really enjoying it so much that I thought maybe I could do some fiction as well. And so the fifth season was uh, available through my library and I picked it up and I just had a really hard time. Now this is written structurally, uh, it is a little bit different than anything else that I have read. So I don't know if that added to things, but I think I just like listening to nonfiction on audiobook because it seems like a podcast or a lecture or things that I am very familiar with. Whereas with fiction, I like to be able to read at my own pace. I don't necessarily want people doing voices in my head. So I just, I don't tend to enjoy fiction on audio as much. Uh, I did find the beginning of this book really intriguing and I do have a copy of it, so I will be reading it myself. It just will not be on audiobook, unfortunately. The second question is, what is the last book you reread? And luckily I have this information very close at hand because I keep my own written book journal and I keep a list of every new book I read during a year and every reread that I read during the year. And I have been doing that since 2010 and it's really nice to go back and look through. I know we all have either Goodreads or one of the other apps that does this, but it's really nice to have that. I just have a little notebook and the notebook is filled with nothing but the books that I have read. So if you're not doing that, then I really recommend it because it's really fun to go back and see how have my reading tastes changed over the last 10 years. Uh, what about the ratio of books I read to reread? There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can find out about yourself. You, I look back, for example, at my uh, books from 2010 and I can see right away that I was uh, finishing up university. I can see that I was uh, starting to read more of a certain type of book or a certain genre of book and it's really I, I find that really interesting so I highly encourage everybody to do it uh, but the last book that I reread was Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore and that is because she had a new book come out in the Graceling series and Bitter Blue was the book that had come before that and one that I had only ever read upon its release so I decided to reread it in anticipation of the new book and I thought that the reread and the new book were both fantastic. Uh, the third question is the last book you bought. Uh, I bought a Dragonlance bind up, which I will put a little picture of it up above um, because I'm going to be doing a Dragonlance reread. This was one of the books that I mentioned on one of my very early videos on the channel called Nostalgia Goggles or books that I really loved, would have given five stars as a 
preteen or teenager that I would like to go back and reread because I haven't reread them since. So Dragonlance was one of those books and luckily I found a great group of friends on Alan's Discord who also want to reread it and we have set up a little buddy read group in order to do so so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, question number four, last book you said you read and didn't. Similarly, I don't tend to do this and I don't know, I guess there are reasons why people do this. They, they feel like they should read certain books or uh, they need to have read something. I feel like I got over a lot of that a long time ago. Maybe there was a time in my life where I would have kind of fibbed or fudged things to, to make it seem like I was reading something other than what I was actually reading. But I have zero shame over the things that I read. I also understand that you cannot read everything. So I, I don't feel the need to say that I have read things when I haven't. The last time that I did anything close to this, I keep, again, with the lists. I keep a running list of all of the Stephen King books that I have read and not read. And I will admit that as I was going through that, because I had been counting it for my Q&A video, like counting up the Stephen King books that I had read to see who was my most read author. Uh, and I noticed that I hadn't checked off Dreamcatcher, which I, I bought Dreamcatcher I don't know if it was when it was released or like shortly after and tried to read it and had a really hard time with it and I actually that's a book that I didn't finish so that's one of like the three that I didn't finish uh, and as I was looking at that list I thought I don't really have a lot of interest in picking that up again so I gave it a little tick to mark it as read so I, I'm lying to my journal and myself but I'm not sure if I will ever go back and reread that book. So that will be my answer for that one. Uh, number five, what is the last book you wrote in the margins of? Uh, this is a really boring answer. Last year I did my licensing exam. I was studying for my, it's called your Royal College exam in Canada. So when you get to the end of med school, you write an exam. Then when you get to the end of residency, you write an exam in your specialty. So I wrote the psychiatry specialty exam and the book that I used to study for that or one of the many books that I used to study for that is called Kaplan and Sadek's Synopsis of Psychiatry. Um, I can also put a picture of that up here but it's a giant book and I did a lot of highlighting and a lot of scribbling in the margins as I was studying for that exam. The next question, uh, what is the last book you had signed? So because I live in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> authors don't tend to come here, uh, so I don't frequently get books signed. I definitely have purchased signed books, but in terms of bringing a book to an author and getting it signed, uh, one of my very best friends, Laura, bought me or got me a signed copy of The Song of Achilles, which is one of my favorite books of all time really funny story she she gave me this for either my birthday or christmas and i thought it was a really lovely gift i was like oh she knows that i love that book so she bought me a copy of it and so for probably a month i just thought that this was a really sweet like thoughtful gift she bought me my my favorite book until i don't remember if she made an offhand comment about meeting Madeline Miller or or what it was but I went I went and looked inside the cover of the book and it had been signed and so I felt like I did not give the appropriate gratitude for this present because it then became even more thoughtful and even more wonderful and is definitely one of my prized possessions but that that is my uh, the last book that was signed for me the last time that I saw an author to get a book signed was when I attended comic-con I'll see if I have a picture of me dressed up for Comic-Con that I can pop up on the screen. Uh, but that was 10 years ago and I had my new copy of The Wise Man's Fear signed by Patrick Rothfuss. And he was very, very kind to me that day. So uh, my next book, or my next question, sorry, is what is the last book you lost? So I would like to say that I lose a lot of things. I have, I'm very scatterbrained. Uh, I always have been. I lose a lot of water bottles. I, my parents refused to buy me a watch as a child because I lost so many of them. When I was in my 20s, I had to basically write an essay about why or how I would take care of a very nice watch if my parents bought it for me so that I could wear it to work and, and wear it with my, uh, my outfits to, uh, to school or slash residency slash work. And finally, I did get one, which I did not lose, but I am a loser of things. And 
I have never lost a book. I don't know how, I don't know if it's, maybe I don't carry them around as much, um, but I, I don't remember ever having lost one. I have loaned out some books that have not returned to me. And the last book uh, that this happened with is called Barney's Version by Mordecai Richler, which is a phenomenal book. It's not fantasy. So if you're here for the fantasy content, then I apologize. But if you just enjoy literary fiction or contemporary fiction, this book is fantastic. I cannot rate it highly enough. It is one of my favorite works of Canadian literature. It is probably my husband's favorite book of all time. We have both reread it. There's also a really good movie uh, that was released, I don't know, maybe like 10-ish years ago. Uh, but if you have not read Barney's version and you're looking for um, a really meaty contemporary, then I would highly recommend that. And if you have it, if you have my copy, bring it back to me. Uh, the next question is the last book you had to replace uh this mostly happens with children's books i am i always have been a big uh, advocate for if you love books then love them i i know that i have these beautiful shelves behind me but i don't really care that much about keeping my books pristine. If there is a book that I that holds a lot of sentimental value, then I tend to, you know, keep it up and away. But for the most part, I don't mind loaning my books. I let my kids play with my books. I let them take them down and look at them because I want them to love books and I don't want them to be treated like there's something that needs to be kept up and away on the shelf. And and that might be why I don't mind buying the mass market paperbacks or I don't like I don't care about the creases or the bends in the spines. I, I don't mind if my books look loved because I love them a lot. Uh, and this has happened with our kids books. So we have let them play with books since they were little and and it takes a lot out of them. We let them bring them in bed with them. We let them bring them outside. If you want to be out in a tree reading a book, then that's great. I'm glad that you like that. And so there are definitely kids books that we have had to replace. Uh, the most recent of which I think was Donuts for a Dragon, which is one of my kids favorite books. And I think we might be on our third copy because they have worn out uh, the previous two. Um, the, the, the last books that I, I I can't say I replaced them, uh, but the last books that I kind of substituted are these uh, beautiful editions of The Lord of the Rings. So I bought this as a present, I guess, or a reward for myself when I passed my Royal College exam after all of that studying. And this is the illustrated uh, edition of The Lord of the Rings with illustrations by Alan Lee. And they're beautiful. And I, I can't say that I replaced my other copies because they're also up there on the shelf. But I, I bought a duplicate copy of some books, so I think that still counts. Uh, the next question, what is the last book you had an argument over? This is a very similar answer to um, kind of not telling the truth about what you read. I don't feel like I am in a place in my life where I'm going to argue with people about books. Uh, I. In my line of work, there is a lot of uh, disagreement in terms of uh, the treatment that I do and the types of patients that I treat. And I have learned a lot uh, over the last 10 years about how to communicate effectively, how to um, disagree without arguing, how to look at all sides of an argument and a presentation. I have learned uh, just through life experience, but also through work and through all of the other things that I love, like reading, that there are very rarely a right and a wrong in any situation. Uh, that's not to say that every situation, sometimes there is a right and a wrong, but most of the time there are various shades of gray, which is what we love so much about modern fantasy and modern literature. Uh, but I don't have it in me to argue with people about books. If you do not like something that I have read, if you do not like an opinion of mine, then I welcome and relish that because if everybody thought like me, then this would be a very boring place and I wouldn't need to make any of these videos because we'd all have the same thoughts anyway. That being said, I can have some passionate discussions sometimes and really the only person that I even come close to arguing with, I guess, is my husband and he just knows what to say to fire me up, I think. So the last book that we had, what I will call a heated discussion about, is Serafina. And I don't know where it is on my shelf uh, or I would pull it out. But I was talking about um, ideas for a video and I was talking about character driven novels because I love characters. And I had been talking about Serafina and my husband was like, oh, 
that boring dragon book. And if I really thought that he had a lot of intense feelings about Serafina, then I wouldn't mind, but I knew he was only saying it to make me mad, which shouldn't make me mad, but he seems to be the only person who can do that. And uh, I personally do not think that Serafina is boring. I think it is a very underrated work of I would call it probably on the border between YA and adult fantasy, but it is a character-driven novel about a young woman named Serafina who is half dragon, and in the society in which she lives there are humans, there are dragons, but the two are not supposed to mix. So she is an illegal citizen and she needs to keep the fact that she is half dragon under wraps. And it's just a very quiet kind of meditative story about Serafina's life. Uh, it is very character focused. There is not a lot of action, but I do not find it in any way boring. So that is the last book that I had a lively discussion with my husband about. And the very last question on this uh, tag is, what is the last book you couldn't get a hold of? Uh, so I will give two answers for this. The last book that I absolutely couldn't get uh, is a set from Juniper Books that I would really like to buy, and that is the Jane Austen, I think it's called the Obvious State set. Um, I'll put, I'll just pop a little picture up here. And the place where I saw this was on Murphy Napier's channel. She has it in the background, like on her bookshelves. And since the very first time that I saw one of her videos, I have thought that they were the most beautiful books. And for a long time, I couldn't even fathom buying them because they were like astronomically out of reach for me. Uh, but I am in a position now where I would be able to buy those as kind of a special, for a special occasion or, um, you know, if, if there was something coming up where I needed to get a present, uh, then I could buy them, but they are sold out. And I don't know how often Juniper Books restocks, but I really hope they restock at some point because I would really, really like to have those. Uh, the last book that I did a lot of finagling to get my hands on uh, was Wizardry and Wild Romance by Michael Moorcock, and more specifically the newer updated version that was released in 2004. So I could not find this anywhere in Canada. And finally, what I did was buy a copy from the US, mail it to my friend Laura, who I mentioned earlier in the video, and then she got it at her house, was very kind, wrapped it up and mailed it to me. So it kind of made its way piecemeal, piecemeal to me. And to be honest, I had no idea what I was ordering because I ordered a used copy on, I don't know if it was AB eBooks or eBay, some place where I could get it. And thankfully it came and it's in very nice condition. It's almost in new or pristine condition. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but that is the tag. Those are the 10 questions on the 10 last books tag. And I had a lot of fun doing this. Again, I have a really hard time tagging other people. This is one of the things that makes me feel uh, very awkward and always has. I don't like the selection of teams or having to pick people for partners. I don't ever like the feeling that I'm leaving somebody out. Uh, so if you are watching this and you like doing tags, then please do it. I would love to hear your answers. And I bet there are lots of you out there who would have really cool answers for this tag. If you have made it all the way to the end of this kind of rambling video, then thank you. And I will see you with another video soon. Bye.